Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about romances with tortured heroines. I've made quite a few videos about tortured heroes but today we're going to do tortured heroines. I think I've made one other video with this trope in it so I'll link that down below if you're interested. Um, but we have this whole stack of romances with heroines who have gone through some stuff. So let's get into it. First, I obviously have to mention Shiloh from Fractured Sky by Catherine Cowles. This is the last book in the Tattered and Torn series. I do recommend reading this series specifically in order because you meet Shiloh and experience her trauma and what she's gone through in book number one. And I don't feel like you get the big oomph of what she's like going through and understand the severity of it when you don't read book number one. So in book number one, we get to read about her past when she's a kid and she actually gets kidnapped by a man who's going through some mental health problems in book number one and is locked in a uh, like shed for a few days. And it's absolutely awful. She gets saved, she gets rescued, whatever the case may be, but she's now grown up and her family treats her like she's broken basically and she wants to be anything but and she really finds solace in a ranch nearby that our hero Ramsey runs. It's a rehabilitation ranch for horses who have gone through abuse and this hero has also been on one of my tortured hero heroes videos um, because he was wrongfully accused of a crime and was put in jail for a while and so he's experienced quite a lot. But yeah, these two find solace in each other and it's a beautiful, beautiful romance. I love this one so much. I also have Rain Me In by Kayla Gross. This starts out with a heroine coming back to her small town, to the farm, the ranch that her family owns where her parents are because her mom recently got injured i think she like broke her foot or something and she can't really do chores and stuff around the farm so the heroine decided i'm gonna go home and help them out but she hasn't been back home in i want to say five or more years um ever since her brother passed away she actually saw her brother die and um it's really affected her and her mental health and her love for this town and her home she doesn't feel like she can come back that she deserves to come back because she honestly feels like she's at fault for what happened to her brother this is her romance with a guy that actually works at the kind of like country bar in town this hero is her brother's best friend. So when her brother was alive, this was Gavin, her brother's best friend. And he had the hugest crush on his friend's older sister. Like he's like, oh my gosh, she is smoking. And so when he sees her at the bar that he works at, he's like, oh my gosh, this is a recipe for an amazing time. Um, but it doesn't really get off on the right foot. That's all I'm gonna leave you with. This one is really good. It talks a lot about mental health and what people are struggling with. So um, I really love this one. If you want a good cowboy romance, this is the one you should pick up. Next I have book seven in the Perfectly Imperfect series by Neva Altaj. This is a mafia romance series filled with like disability, mental health, chronic illness, representation. So I love that. This is book number seven, but you can read this one as a standalone. A lot of her books, like they're in the same series, but they have mostly nothing to do with each other. There are ones that connect, but I feel like this one like doesn't at all. Um, so our heroine has experienced horrible abuse in her life. She was put in a arranged marriage with an older man in the mafia, mafia boss, and the hero is her bodyguard. He gets hired to guard this man that he wants revenge on, his wife, and he's like, I'm gonna end up killing his wife because turns out the mafia boss man ended up being responsible for why his wife died. So he's been planning revenge for years. And he's like, you know what? I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna kill your wife. And then when he gets into the house, when he starts being her bodyguard, when he starts getting close to them, he realizes, uh, this woman does not want to be here. This woman is being abused every single day to save her. And then he ends up falling in love with her. <laughs> I love a bodyguard trip. Like I love bodyguards. Mm, they're so good. And the heroine has experienced so much trauma like props to her for being so freaking strong like she's amazing next is heavy crown by sophie lark this is the last book in her brutal birthright series and this is another mafia romance series but i do recommend reading this one in order the heroine of this story i think her name's alanda elena 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 sorry <laughs> elena she is the um daughter to i believe a russian mafia man and he has basically forced her to trick our hero who is the son to a very notorious 
I think Italian mafia man. And he's like, okay, you're gonna seduce him. You're going to have him marry you. And then we're gonna take him down. And the heroine has no other choice. Her father has abused her for years. So she has no other choice. And then she ends up falling in love with this man. And she's like, crap, what do I do? But there is one point where the beans are spilled and there's no going back. So. It's really good. I love this series. I thought it was a great conclusion. If you want a historical, I have Married by Morning by Lisa Kleypas. This is a part of her Hathaway series. This one has two characters that come from a tortured, damaged past, if you will. We read about the hero in book number one. His fiance, the love of his life, actually ended up dying from a sickness, from a fever. He basically drank himself almost to death multiple times. And by book number three, by his book, or no, it's book number four. He's book number four, never mind. By his book, regardless, by his book, he has gotten his life back together. He's more secure and has gotten over, not gotten over, but dealt with his grief in all these years. And he ends up noticing <laughs> um, his sister's governess companion. And he's like, wait a minute. I really like making fun of her and um, being with her. She's fun. Like, I think I'm interested. <laughs> Little does he know that the heroine has a past that she has been keeping secret for all these years of her being a governess. And she is terrified of anyone finding out. And that's all I can really say. But this one is really good. You have like characters that like just poke at each other and ugh, it's so fun. The banter is fantastic. Another historical is The Marquess and I by Stacey Reed. So this one's more of a novella length book. It's shorter um, and it is a second chance romance. So it starts with our hero getting a title as a Marquess and um, he was not in line for this title whatsoever. He was like 10th in line, but a bunch of people ended up dying like before he got the title and um, he was not expecting this whatsoever. Anyway, it starts out with him at this ball at a family's house that he has some history with because he had a thing with the parents daughter um and was like full on in love with her would have married her but something happened in the past where he didn't like he thinks that she betrayed him betrays trust and everything like that he hasn't been there in years and then when he sees our heroine he is in utter shock because she is now blind and she was in blind when they were together all those years ago and he feels really hurt he's like why didn't you come to me why didn't i know about this like i would have helped you like i feel so betrayed that you couldn't confide in me and um, yeah, it's a second chance romance between the two of them. There is something that happens with the heroine and how she became blind. That's all I really want to say because it's a shorter book, um, but she has dealt with a lot, is dealing with a lot, so. Ooh, next I have a monster read. This is His Darkest Craving by Tiffany Roberts. We have another character who's experienced quite a lot of abuse in her life. The heroine, her past relationship, the hero, not the hero, I'm so sorry, her past partner was very abusive and she decides to take control of her life a little more. She decides to rent a cabin on the edge of these very mysterious dark wood, like, kind of like an Airbnb in the middle of nowhere. And she wants to write, she's a writer. She's like, I'm gonna take this time to write. And then something happens, like things get a little creepy at night sometimes. There's this shadow she thinks she sees at night. It turns out that's the hero, that's Cruz. He's this shadow entity demon. And um, he turns into this like physical form like once a year on Halloween, by the way. And Cruz like sneaks into the house, like right when she, comes to the cabin and is like full on planning to kill her because he hates humans, but like he physically cannot. He's like, why can't I physically kill this woman? I've killed so many humans, what is going on? He starts like kind of like stalking her, watching her and falling for her. So yeah, it's the romance between this heroine and a shadow entity. You wouldn't think that's hot, but it's actually really hot. <laughs> okay, it's really good. Um, but yeah, the heroine has experienced a lot of trauma in her life with her previous relationship, past abuse, and the hero is like full on ready to like, Oh, the last one for touching his woman, so. And the last two books I have to mention are two books in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. I feel like Ruby writes heroines so well, like so well. You feel so much of these heroines do even in these like alien romances with blue men. <laughs> like she does it, she does it so sticking well. So these are just two I wanted to highlight. She does have a few heroines that have gone through quite a lot of trauma, quite a lot of hardship in their lives, but these are just two. This is book number three. This is Barbarian Lover. This is Kira's romance. Out of all the women in Ice Planet Barbarians on that spaceship that they were originally kidnapped from, she was the first out of all of them. So she's experienced and seen some horrific things. And she was implanted with like the hearing device because she was the first woman there. Yeah, there is also some trauma that she goes through. Goes 
through throughout the book as well. Um, she deals with a lot of grief and survivor's guilt also. But this is her romance with Ahako, who is kind of like the class clown of the bunch. <laughs> so he's really fun. And then also I have Tiffany from Barbarian's Prize. This is a romance with Saluk. Tiffany has been vied over for quite a while because she's one of like, I think at this point, one of two women who are not already mated. And so men and this tribe are like all over her, wanting to get with her, whereas Saluk decides like, Tiffany, I feel like needs a friend. She needs a friend. So that's what happens between the two of them. Even though he does have feelings for her, he's not gonna come on strong. He's not going to admit those things because he knows that he can, t like he can tell that she's very uncomfortable with all this male attention. So he just decides, I think Tiffany needs a friend. Let me be her friend and um, they end up falling for each other. It's an amazing friends to lovers romance. Um, but Tiffany has experienced a lot being abducted, but also before the abduction as well. Um, I don't want to spoil things for you. Um, but yeah, it's really, really good. I love it so much. Tiffany is amazing. Ruby Dixon, like this is one of my favorite Ruby Dixon characters for sure, Tiffany is. And their romance is one of my favorites because it's like a friends to lovers. This one's really under hype. I know it's not everyone's like favorite book. It's a little quieter, I guess, compared to other books in the series, but it's absolutely beautiful to me. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some romances that have damaged heroines. So let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a cow emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.